Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. I'm glad to come your way today, being Tuesday, the 3rd October 2023. I welcome you all to our daily meditation using our daily fountain of the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. I encourage you to please give your time and attention as we listen to God's word. Let us pray. Father, again, want to thank you for this new day. Thank you, Lord, for the day which you have given unto us. We give praise unto your name for your word of God. That as we study your word, you will grant us through interpretation in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, please grant us grace, even as we sit around your feet, under your feet, to hear you. Grant us enablement. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, we have a wonderful topic, faithfulness in leadership. Faithfulness in leadership. And our text is Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, we will begin reading from verse 28. Act chapter 20, verse 28. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch. I remember that for three years, I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have coveted no one silver or gold or apparel. Yes. You yourself know that these hands have provided for my necessities and for those who were with me. I have shown you in every way, by laboring like this, that you must support the weak. I remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. Then they all wept freely and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him. Sorrow among all, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spoke that they will see his face no more. And they accompanied him to the ship. This is the word of the Lord. Faithfulness in leadership. That is our topic for today. The rise and fall of every organization depend on this leader. Any organization that is rising, it is as a result of its leader. Any organization that is falling today, it is as a result of leadership. In Zechariah chapter 13, verse 7, Zechariah 13, verse 7, the scripture says, Smite the shepherd, and the sheep will scatter. You want to get the followership? Get the leader. 
You want to see how followership are doing? Check the life of a leader. This truth is very relevant to our aspect of leadership, especially in the church of God today. And I'd like us to draw our lessons from this passage by bringing out four points that will guide us as we go through this devotion. Number one, guard yourselves and the church. Guard yourself and the church. Verse 28. Number two, feed the church of God. Feed the church of God. Verses 28 to 31. And number three, live for God and for God's word. Live for God and for God's word. Verse 32. Labor and give. Labor and give, not coveting worldly wealth. That is found from verses 33 to 38. Verses 33 to 38. Now, let's, let's get the first point. Guard yourself. Guard yourself and the church. Now, these words are the last words of Paul to the church in Ephesus as he was about leaving. He told them to keep watch over themselves and the flock that is the church. The church, the flocks in which the Holy Spirit has made them overseers. Now Paul was talking with leaders. He was talking to overseers. He was talking to leaders of the church. Now, let's observe the first charge that Paul gave. Number one, the leader must look after his own life. That is the first charge. For you to be a faithful leader, for you to lead well, for you to lead in such a way that God will be pleased with you, you must first First, look after your life, your character, your conduct, before you can look at the flock of God. Like a popular saying we said, you cannot give what you don't have. A leader must keep watch. Remember that the flocks that you are carrying it's not your own. A responsibility has been given unto you by God. So these flocks, you must give attention to. You have no any other work rather than the work of caring, of keeping watch over the flocks. You must concentrate upon. You must focus upon you must attend to, attend to their needs, attend to their plights. You must watch after and guide their life. You must not allow them to go astray. So there are specific areas a leader must guard. Number one, a leader must guard against false teaching. There are false teachers everywhere. You must guard. There are people coming here and there thinking they are representing God, whereas they come with a different agenda, polluting the minds of God's people. And for you to be a faithful leader, you must watch on that aspect. Number two, a leader must guard against self-indulgence. You must guard against drunkenness. You must guard against the possession of this life. And number three, 
hear what the scripture says. He said, be careful. Or your heart will be overwhelmed down with dissipation, with drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that the day will close on you, expectedly like a trap. In Luke chapter 21, verse 34. And as a leader, you must guard. You must watch. So that this day will not fall on you unexpectedly. A leader must watch and give himself to reading. Reading the word of God. Preaching the word of God. Three things are very crucial here. For you to be a faithful leader. For you to be a faithful leader, you must devote yourself in reading the word of God. In preaching the word of God. And also teaching the word of God. 1 Timothy 4 verse 13 says, 1 Timothy 4 verse 13 says, Until I come, devote yourselves to the public reading of scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Another thing a leader must do is to look after all the flock. Look after all the flock. Shepherd the church of God. God has given you the flock. You must look after them. Take note. You have no honor that duty done to take care of the sheep. You are to feed them. You are to care for them. You are to watch over them. Remember, as a leader, you will give an account of your leadership. What makes a shepherd or a leader truly great is his willingness to get down in the trenches with his sheep, live among them, and literally risks his life protecting the flock from danger many people are afraid of taking risk and as a leader the key thing that makes you outstanding and that will make you a faithful leader is taking the risk going down with the leader john MacArthur once said a good shepherd is not known by how gentle or how gently he pays the sheep. No, a good shepherd is known by how well he protects them and feeds them. And as a leader, do you protect them? Do you care for them? Do you feed them? Paul's instruction to Timothy in First Timothy lays a proper foundation for the character qualities needed unto a pastor. But true shepherding requiring a man applying himself to care for the needs or for others according to the word of God, no matter what it costs. It is an incredible honor, blessing, and privilege to be entrusted by God to shepherd the spiritual growth of his flock. When you are called to lead, it's a privilege. When you are called to lead, is a privilege. Remember, there are others whom the Lord would have called, but he decided to call you to lead. No pastor, no teacher, whether small group leaders, should ever take that responsibility for granted. When you have been given a responsibility to lead, don't take it for granted. Hear me and hear me very well. Never you take that responsibility for granted. Because God expects leader to model application of his word. So the flock has a righteous example to emulate. If we are to fulfill our calling, if we are to be faithful in leadership, 
we must love as Jesus loved. We must serve as Jesus served. We must lead as Jesus led. We should be conscious of our responsibility to heed to God's instruction in feeding, tending, and taking care of the sheep of God. Purchase with his blood. Leadership ensure that none get missing. None get missing. Either by their own ignorances or carelessness. As we pray, remember, there are prey everywhere. There are enemies everywhere looking for one to devour. Looking for one to devour. There are enemies looking for your sheep. Looking for one to capture. There are killers everywhere. And the only way that the enemy will not be able to get hold of your sheep is teaching the word of God. Caring for them. Going extra mile to make sure that these sheep are comfortable. Friends, like our forefathers, there must be stability. Stability in the word of God. Stability in maintenance of a balanced gospel. Christians generally, as we conclude, whether in a leadership or fellowship, followership position, should emulate the characteristics of Christ in service. Humility. Leaders, we must be humble. Like Christ, who is our example, was humble. We must be humble. Remember, Jesus left his glory to come. And die a shameful, a shameful death for humankind. Are we ready to die for our members? Are we ready? Are you ready to die for your sheep? Are you ready? Are you ready? This is the mind that should be in us. As Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 8, to obey the great commission. Of God in Matthew chapter 8, verse 19 to 20, say, Go ye, go ye. We have a responsibility. We have responsibility to go. We have several examples of our leaders to emulate. Even today, as we remember our father, Bishop Samuel Ajay Kroda, look at his attitude. The first black bishop. He is a bishop, evangelist, a missionary. Samuel Ajayi Crowther sacrificed his life, sacrificed his comfort zone, and to all to see that the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ was spread all over West Africa, in particular in Nigeria, even in the face of opposition and challenges. This is a serious example for us as leaders to emulate. Are we ready to leave our comfort zone to obey the Great Commission? Are we ready to leave our comfort zone to go to the interior in order to interior in order to preach the gospel? The Lord will not find us wanting. As the days draw near, may we take our responsibilities as leaders very seriously in caring, in shepherding, in preaching, in teaching, and in leading. Let us pray. Father, we come to you because we have failed in our responsibilities as leaders. We have not shepherded the flock as expected. 
we have remained in our comfort zone. But we come to you this morning asking for mercy, asking for grace, that you will give us strength, you will give us grace to be an effective witness in advancing your kingdom. Help us to be faithful in our leadership in every aspect of our life. Thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.